Hey guys, it's Willie here again with another episode of Embroidery Hub. Today I'll be showing you a creative way to add dimensions to your designs by simulating the look of fabric clay embroidery using only stitches rather than fabric to create the fill. This technique is not only a creative way to add visual interest to your design, it also adds more value which you can subsequently charge more for. I'll show you how you can simplify the design and the digitizing process to create the fill and the sequential steps to achieve this effect on a cap. If you want to embroider your own cap like this one, then stay until the end of the video where I'll show you where you can download this design for free. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below and we'll make sure to answer them. Now remember to like and subscribe for more tutorials. Let's go ahead and get started. Before I begin, if you want to see some live demonstrations like this one and get hands-on training on a recall machine of your choice, join us this year for Deco Summit, which I'll link below. Deco Summit is a three-day conference where instructors will show you how to use your own machine to create projects like this and more. All right, so let's go over what you're going to need for this kind of embroidery. The main thing we're going to need is one Richardson cap. Now, these are the most structured caps in the industry, meaning that we're not going to use any stabilizer and we'll be using a 75 by 11 needle and a standard weight thread. If you want to learn how to embroider on these caps, make sure to check out our previous video in the description below that will walk you through the process. Since we're adding a 3D puff on the design, we'll need one strip of foam the same color as our thread, which will cost you around 25 cents. And for the same reason, we're also going to use a heat gun to clean up the design towards the end. We'll also be using a standard cap ring for this project. And like always, we have our snips and our scissors. Now for a machine, we're going to be using the MT-1501. This machine is great for caps because it has a 270 degree cap rotation feature that lets you embroider on both the front and the sides of the cap in one run. We previously made a video showing you this feature. Now if you want to check it out, go to the link in the description below. Lastly, the software we'll be using to digitize this design is Chroma Digitizing Software, which it comes in three tiers, the Inspire, the Plus, and the Lux. If you want to learn more about this software, you can download the free trial by following the link in the description below. All right, let's go over how much profit you can make from these caps. You can buy these caps for about $5 each, but if you buy them wholesale, you can probably get them for around $3. And since you're embroidering a creative design and digitizing for both landscapes and 3D puff, you can charge upwards of $35 for just a single cap. These caps are especially popular in gift shops for different cities since they incorporate both the city abbreviation and the landscape of the city, but you can use the same concept and technique for many other applications. For example, we can easily make a Vegas inspired cap the very same way. We would just have Vegas in big bold letters and then fill them with famous landmarks of the Vegas Strip. Now the trick is for you to create a design that matches this one in complexity, but that is relevant to your target audience. Let's go over the digitizing now. There's a few things that make this digitizing process unique. First is that we chose the landscape to act as a fill for the design, which we choose to represent the words MIA. This was made possible by utilizing the freehand digitizing tool in Chroma Lux. This tool acts like a trace outline, which will later be converted into a complex fill or any other stitch style you choose. As a guide, I used an image of Miami Beach, which I moved around inside the outline, only digitizing the more recognizable shapes, like some of the buildings and the beach. This was mainly to simplify the landscape so that it'll be recognizable after I digitize it. Also, we had to be careful with the density of the stitching. Since we are embroidering on a Richardson cap, which they're very tough, we made sure not to make it even tougher by packing too many stitches together. For example, the bigger complex fills like the water and the sky, we use a 0.5 density and for the buildings, we used a 0.3. In order to simplify the shapes, but still retain as much details as possible, I used different kinds of stitches. Like for some of the buildings with thinner windows, I used a run stitch at a length of 1.5 millimeters. And for the buildings with thicker windows, I used a satin stitch with a 0.3 density. Now, something important that must be adjusted are the angles. Now, the reason for this is if you make all the fills and broder using the same angle, then your material will shift over one or two millimeters in that direction, causing registration issues. So we have to digitize all the fills in different directions. For example, like the sky and the sand. Because we have so many shapes, make sure to overlap them to avoid any spacing in between them. And also make the density of the objects on top dense enough that it does not show the fills below. Now, usually for caps, we would digitize the design to start from the bottom up and center out to avoid any issues like puckering. But since this design has shapes in the center that had to be embroidered first because of the way the design was layered, I had to compromise and start in the center for those elements. 
but I made sure that at least all the shapes had their starting point on the bottom and the ending point on top. Lastly, for the 3D, we did our usual digitizing steps, which are deleting our underlay and setting the density as high as possible. This way, the satin stitches will be closer to each other and completely cutting off all the foam on the edge, making the cleanup process quicker. Let us know in the comments below if you ever digitized in landscape before or how you typically fill the inside of your design, whether that be with stitches, fabric, or even print. So the first step we have to do is hoop this cap. And because of the fact that we're embroidering on a Richardson cap, you have to make sure to get the hooping just right. To learn how to do this, make sure you check out the video we linked in the description below. Now let's insert the cap into the machine. Okay, so now we're ready to set up the panel. The first step we're going to do is choose our design. We're gonna go to the file. We already have it saved here. And all you have to do is press the OK button and it's gonna load into your home screen. Once we have it in the home screen, the next thing we're going to do is choose my hoop. We're going to be doing an Richardson cap. So I'm going to my settings and I'm going to choose the cap hoop. I'm gonna press OK and the machine will set itself in the center. After we do this, it's going to load and take me back to the home screen with the design and the hoop around it. Now all we have to do is go into our color sequence and set it. Now in this case, my memory has already a color sequence. Now I just want you to remember to put a frame out option before your 3D puff. In this case, my 3D puff will be my last step. So before this step, I'm going to put a frame out. And you do this by pressing this button. After you do that, you'll see an F for frame out will come out next to the number and all you have to do is press the OK button to save it. This way, when the machine finishes the flat embroidery, it's going to automatically stop and the cap driver will move forward so that you can place the foam on the cap. Using needle number one, center a design along the center seam of the cap using our arrow keys. After we do that, we're going to press the trace button on our panel and make sure that our needle is not going to hit the cap ring or go outside of the embroidery area. The trick to placing the design low on the cap is to keep using your arrow keys and your trace function until you get the design as low as possible on the cap without the presser foot hitting the cap ring. If you guys want to learn more about 3D puff embroidery, go down to the description below. We'll have a video there for you. Now this design has around 39,000 stitches. It should take us around 45 minutes to be completed. Uh, all I have to do now is pretty much raise my speed and press the start button. I usually use two needles to hold down the foam to the cap. Then you just press the start button again and wait for the machine to finish.
right? So this is it. Let's go ahead and take your cushion away. Here. Let's take the foam out now, just completely rip it out. And there you can see it. All right, so now let's go ahead and take out the cap and let's unhoop it. Here you got the results. We're gonna end up using our heat gun just to make sure that 3D puff is nice and tight in there. All right, so we use the heat gun to make sure that the puff and the threads will sink in nice and tight. Now you can feel how nice and tight it looks and it feels good too. All right, everyone, we hope this video has shown you a creative way to add interest to your cap that you can profit from because in the world of apparel decorations, it's all about standing out from the crowd and exploring your creativity. Now, if you want to practice embroidering this design, you can download it using the link below. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let us know if you have any questions about this project in the comments below. Also, if you want to connect with other apparel decorators like myself, join our free Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery. There you can ask questions and join the community. For the latest in the world of decorated apparel, follow us on our Instagram at RicomaHQ. Alright guys, thanks for watching, that's it for this one.